This video is about troubleshooting slow with Message Analyzer. Slowness is one of the most popular complaints when a problem occurs. But as many of us onion peelers know, slowness is often just a symptom, leading to another layer of the onion. But I'll tell you, slow has met its match because troubleshooting slow is where Message Analyzer shines. My computer is slow, one of the most common sentences uttered by man in the internet age. What is slow, you ask? In a short or possible sentence, they often reply, this web page won't load. Starting to peel the onion, you ask clarifying questions like, do other pages load okay? You might answer yes, which helps you rule out the computer and your local network to some extent. So now we need to collect some data. The basic capture video provides details about that. So let's look at some data I've already captured. But remember, there are multiple ways to capture traffic with Message Analyzer. Fortunately, the steps we show in this video apply to most of them. For me, onion peeling describes the process of troubleshooting because for one, every problem presents a symptom of another problem. It seems that once you've figured out the root cause, it's really just the starting point for more troubleshooting, which can also make you cry. Sometimes the process is so befuddled that it reminds me of another analogy, this time a nursery rhyme about a batty old woman who swallows increasingly larger animals in order to get rid of the first one. By the time you understand the answer to the first problem, you can't even remember why you swallowed the fly. Message Analyzer is a great onion peeler. You can use it to load multiple logs and understand multiple layers of the onion together. And for troubleshooting slowness, Message Analyzer has some useful tools that quickly peel away some layers. So now, let's open a network trace and quickly analyze the data for slowness. Let's pretend a user is complaining that a Bing page is loading slowly. Of course, this is just a simulated problem. In fact, since Bing is so reliable, it makes a good source website for a test. To simulate problems, I use a tool to introduce network errors. This first video will stay at a high level to keep things short. However, we can visit this in more depth later. When you open a trace, the extension determines a profile to use. Profiles can set the analysis grid, column layouts, and default view or views displayed. This is the default layout for .cat files, which opens the analysis grid, and then a grouping view with conversation tree on the left side. For any particular extension, it's easy to change the profile by using tools, options, and profiles. But we can also change layouts manually as we wish. Just look for the layout button, which exists in the grouping view as well, and other views like charts. Let's shrink the grouping view to get it out of the way for now and focus on the analysis grid where we see the network messages. With ETL and native message analyzer capture formats, we also see Windows tr kernel trace messages, which we get process information from. We'll override the default analysis grid layout by selecting a different one called performance top down. I find it easy here to search to traverse the list. This layout replaces the time delta column with two columns called time elapsed and response time. And sorting on these columns is how we're going to analyze the slowness. In fact, the time elapsed column is already sorted for us. So let's explain how these columns are computed. If we imagine capturing an HTTP request and response, Response time measures how quickly the service has responded by taking the difference in time of the last message going to the server and the time of the first response returning back. This provides a gauge of how fast the server or service is responding. Time elapsed measures the time it takes for all the data to complete, and this provides you an indication of how fast or slow the network connection is. When we look at the time elapsed column, 
the first message, we can see it took more than two seconds. Compare the first few messages to the other messages in the list, and we quickly see the outliers. Next, we can look at the response time. In the first three messages, they are very similar, and they're close together. That means that the server response was slow, so we surmise that the network is okay since the difference is so small. But the fourth message in the list, 1302, sticks out. Response time is not close, so that means it responded quickly. However, it still took a long time to transfer the message. Now recognize not every message shown has a response time and this can only be measured when an operation is used to associate a request and response. This is represented by these blue stacked icons. This picture represents a network stack with fragments such as the network message stack view also visually represents. Operations are extensible so Together as a community, we could decide where combining separate messages as operations would be useful. You'll also notice a blue icon in the diagnosis column. An icon in this column indicates that some type of problem was found. The icon is blue as opposed to yellow or red because it indicates a proper protocol behavior, but possibly interesting behavior. TCP retransmits, for instance. Now for these next steps to work correctly, you need to enable a special TCP option that causes the diagnoses to bubble up to the top protocol. And this is under Options, Tools, Options, and then Parsing. Selecting the TCP protocol, we set the Show Verbose Diagnosis to True. Verbose diagnosis messages are disabled by default because it adds noise when you're not concerned with the network layer. However, if you're going to do this type of analysis, it's okay to keep it on. Just remember that seeing a single retransmit is not necessarily a bad thing. It is in combination with the slow response and the time elapse that becomes concerning. Now, multiple diagnosis errors can show up, and sometimes in combinations. Clicking the icon shows a list of all the embedded errors in any of the fragments that make up the operation, which contains the request and response. In this case, you can see a huge list of diagnoses, which are, distribu which are distributed among the fragments. We can view them by expanding the tree, but we'll show perhaps a better way how to do this later in the video. So by analyzing the time elapsed and seeing the disparity with regards to response time, along with the diagnosis icons, we start to see the bigger picture. Already, you can get a strong suspicion that the network is causing issues. But let's go a little further. First, I want to see other messages related to this one. As we explained in other videos, there's a lot going on, and the next message in order could have nothing to do with our current message. To help us, or re-expand the grouping view. For .cap files, the grouping view shows data organized by process, process ID, network, and TCP UDP transport conversations. Again, this layout can be customized and saved using the layout menu. Also listed are built-in saved and feed layouts that are available based on your configuration and subscriptions. I can collapse the entire tree to show only the top level and see the icons and process names. When the grouping view is open, the Find a Grouping Viewer button on the Analysis Grid toolbar locates the associated conversation in the grouping view. Selecting something in the grouping view in turn causes the session to be filtered. So, 
The result is the analysis grid is filtered, showing only the messages related to the node we selected. This result is similar to other tools when you use the follow the stream option. Now, we see that the TCP conversation was found in the tree, and the result of this selection caused a filter to be applied to the entire session. You can see this indicated in the toolbar filter window. Now, let's flatten the messages so we see all the fragments. We drilled in quite a bit now, so there are less messages to look at. Notice that we're still sorted on time elapsed. We could click the timestamp column to sort and reorder things appropriately. However, I'm going to select a TCP-specific layout to help us understand the specific reason for the delay and try to understand how this retransmit is involved in making things slow. So let's select the TCP deep analysis with relative sequent numbers flat. I like the relative layout because it recomputes the sequence numbers based on zero rather than the real value, which is based on some random number generated by the client and server. The flat donates that there's no grouping in the analysis grid layout, which is another possibility for organizing your data. With this flat view, I can understand the effects of the retransmits. The time delta column replaces the time elapsed and response time columns before. At a high level, I can see the retransmits over the span of the conversation. Also, I can see how the time delta changes and affects the traffic. Notice too in this layout that some columns are frozen. This is a feature you can set by right, ma manually right clicking a column. You can undo this by right clicking the first column and freezing the columns to the last. We can dig even deeper and understand the TCP mechanisms, but that's deep enough into the onion for this video. Finally, let's characterize the slowness. For this, we'll use the grouping view, which can be filtered. A filter doesn't show by default, but I'll add one. Now, let me expand the window and type in a filter. I want to choose diagnosis levels, tilde equal nothing. And that stands for diagnosis levels not equal nothing. Now, while it sa might sound like I'm slipping back to my New Jersey accent, nothing here says that the diagnosis value isn't even set. We use a tilde rather than an exclamation point because that version, written like this, is true when the message in question is missing the diagnosis level altogether, which is true of all the messages. Instead, the tilde is used, which has the added requirement that the field is present and then doesn't have a diagnostic level using nothing. So once I apply this filter, we show only the nodes, remove the period, we show only the nodes that have any diagnosis at all. This list is focused and limited to just three conversations or four conversations, that is. Of course, the main one seems to be this 204.79.197.200, which happens to be Bing. I can now say with some certainty that the server at this address is having issues. So we'll stop there for now, but look forward to deeper videos on this topic in the future. So, till next time.